Today I'm going to be reviewing Auric, Samantha Ravindahl's new brand, and I'm going to be reviewing and using the Glow Lust in Selenite as well as the Smoke Reflect in Defiance. So stay tuned to see my thoughts from a non-influencer point of view on textured skin with acne so you'll get an honest review of whether or not this looks nice, how it performs, and my overall thoughts. Normally I go in with the Trader Joe's Rose Water Facial Toner, but today I'm not gonna do that because that really gives me a nice dew, a nice gloss to the cheeks and the face, and I want this product to be able to stand out on its own, so I'm just gonna be going in with moisturizer underneath of all the other products. So this is the Auric Glow Lust in Selenite. I was kind of debating whether or not I wanted to go with the lightest shade Morganite or the next shade Selenite, but I did end up going with this one because during the summer months I get a little bit more of a tan and I do have a somewhat yellow undertone despite what the redness on my cheeks might say. So in having swatched this, getting this lid off is actually really hard and Sam mentioned that in her video because she wants to make sure that it lasts as long as possible so you do kind of have to put some muscle into it to get it off. And also the pump is really nice. I know Sam mentioned that it was from France and you can definitely tell that it's a bougie pump. So let's go ahead and swatch this. You can even see there, I was able to pump out just like the littlest, itty bittiest amount. And that normally you can't do that with a lot of products because the pump just isn't quite as nice. But with this one, you have so much control over how much you wanna pump out. So I'm not trying to waste any product. And here it is rubbed in see it up close it matches my skin tone on my hand really well this product compared to the Charlotte Tilbury uh, Hollywood Flolo photo flawless I'll put the name up here because I can never get it correct um, this is definitely much more creamy than that product I remember that one distinctly being very thin and not having quite the same moisturizing properties that this one has so if you have that and you're looking for a comparison this one is definitely more creamy more moisturizing but not thick if that makes any sense as i apply this i'm going to talk a little more about the product so i really appreciate sam coming out with such a wide shade range in this product Obviously, I have a light skin tone, so a lot of products do work for me, but I couldn't imagine how difficult it must be if you have a deeper skin tone or more of an olive tone skin tone to find products like this that really work for you because so many brands come in just light, medium, dark, and that's not gonna fit everyone's skin tone. I appreciate that even within the lighter shades, she came out with so many nuances in the tone because I do think that Morganite would have been a little too pink for me and the next shade down would have been a little bit too olive for me. So I genuinely feel like this is a very good match for me. So I'm going to be applying this on the high points of my cheeks underneath of my makeup to see how it peeks through and then probably go with just a little more on top kind of as a highlighter. I love a glow under my brow bone, so I am gonna apply some there. I'm starting with just my fingers and then I'm gonna blend it out with a beauty sponge. This blends into like absolutely nothing and looks just like skin on my face and I can't tell if the camera is gonna pick that up, but it it looks like skin like it doesn't look like i have anything on my face other than just a natural healthy glow wow <laughs> i've never seen a product like this because the charlotte tilbury hollywood photo flawless serum or product or whatever it looks like you have a highlighter on if you go see my bailey sarian video you can see it looks like i have a stripe of highlighter but this just looks like this just looks like my skin is really healthy and glowy. A part of me really wants to just slather this all over my face underneath of my makeup, but I am worried that it's gonna get a little greasy around this area and this area of my face. Um, so I'm gonna hold off. I'm gonna find the power within me to resist slathering this all over my face like foundation, but I will be applying a lot more after I finish my foundation. As I do the rest of my makeup, I'm gonna continue to talk about the brand and maybe zoom through a couple of parts so that way we can really focus on the review. I'm 
debating now whether or not I want to put just a little itty bitty pump of this into my foundation. I'm going to do just like the little, the little itty bittiest pump possible. I'm actually going to kind of do it off to the side on my hand so if I get too much, I don't have to mix it in. Okay, that is like not even a fourth of a pump. That was like a baby's teardrop worth of product. So I'm going to take that and blend it in. You probably can't. Yeah, you can barely tell that I mixed anything in. Okay, I am gonna do just a little itty bitty bit more since that like disappeared into nothing. Okay, a little bit more. And this uh, foundation mixture that I use normally is a little dewy, but not really shiny in the way that this Glow Lust is. So we'll see if it looks any different. I'm just gonna slap this all over my face and then blend it out with my beauty sponge. So as you can see up close, my skin looks so dewy and even though you may be thinking, girl, your skin is so dry, right now this is the most hydrated my skin has looked in weeks. So I'm pretty happy with how this product looks on my skin so far. I'm feeling super dewy. I feel like I'm ready to go on a little beach vacation despite it literally snowing outside. So overall, I like the way that this mixed in with my foundation. You can still see it peeking through even a little more in those places that I applied it first and it didn't adjust my foundation coverage. It didn't make it look any different other than adding just that extra level of dewiness and moisture. I am gonna keep my makeup pretty cream product focused today since this is a cream product and I want my skin to be really dewy and luminous today. Something I wanted to talk about is how the brand is not vegan. I feel like this is a little bit of the Mandela effect because Sam has consistently emphasized that the brand is really ethical. She has morals at the core of the way she operates her entire business. Um, you know, the shade range is really inclusive. She made sure to try and do as much as she could for her brand. And I've seen some people say that the products are vegan, but only the smoke reflect in defiance and ego are vegan. So if that's something that's important to you um, to have your products be vegan, then I guess this brand wouldn't be for you. Although the brand is cruelty free and gluten free. And I love Sam, but I feel like she hasn't been quite as clear as she could be and making sure that people know these products aren't fully vegan because I've heard so many people say that when it simply isn't true. off my base I am going to go in just a little more of the glow lust and I'm going to put it where I put it down first on the tops of my cheekbones my nose top of my lip um, brow bone and then even see if I can get it in my inner corner using this little brush and then blending out with my fingers and beauty sponge and also just to note the lid is already getting a little dirty up here if you can see I'm trying to like rub it off so it actually came off pretty easy, but I have a feeling after a couple of weeks in my makeup bag that this is gonna be completely covered in makeup. So I'm putting this on the back of my finger, or I guess the front of my finger, my little brush. I did not do this properly <laughs> with the way that I put this product down and trying to hold my brush. We're gonna make do. The 
then with the rest that's on my finger I'm gonna tap that on my cheeks I feel like I need just a little more for this side, so I am gonna take just again the smallest little pump, like almost nothing. I love this pump. Like just for that reason alone, I recommend this product. Because I hate whenever I'm trying to get just like a little amount just to tap a little extra on and I get like an entire glob of it because it's annoying you have to wipe it up, you're wasting product, versus with this I know I'm getting exactly how much I need. go in with my sponge working with this product I noticed that it stays wet for quite a while so if you're worried about doing a part of your face and blending it out and going back to the other and having it already kind of set down and more difficult to move I don't find that the case at all it's very pliable even after sitting for a little bit and also the beauty sponge doesn't pick up all the product so while going in with the beauty sponge does sheer it out it's not like it soaks it up and there's nothing left anymore. Like you can still tell that I put down a product on the tops of my brow bones and it's still there even after blending it out. So this is what it looks like up close. And I'm really liking the way my skin is looking. I think that this just, it, it makes your skin look so much more healthy and doesn't look like I have anything on my skin like it literally just looks like my skin is naturally glowy and dewy and reflecting in those high points of my face so props to sam for coming up with a product that does a lot but looks like nothing because i think that that's a real testament to how high-end good quality and well thought out this product is that it's so good you can't even see it but you can definitely see the effect that it gives on the skin I'm going to quickly set my face. I wasn't going to, but I just know that once I do my eyebrows and my eyeshadow, there's going to be a little bit of fallout. So I'm going to lightly set it with the Hourglass Translucent Veil Powder, which really shouldn't change much on my face since this is so thin. And I'm going to do my eyebrows and be right back. Brows are done and the face is set. And I'm going to start with the eyes where I will be using the Smoke Reflect in Defiance. And before I get started on the eyes, I'm going to quickly take a little bit of bronzer and just run that through my crease because I don't want to use other eyeshadows with this product. I really want it to stand on its own, but I do feel like I want to start with just a little bit of something in the crease to make sure that it blends out and looks seamless. And if I do need to go with more product, I will because I don't want to look a mess. But my goal is to just use this bronzer and then this product because ultimately I can see this product being used as like an everyday slapped on the lid and go and not really have to do much else so it would be nice if when doing my makeup i could just chuck some bronzer in my crease slap that on call it a day so hopefully this works out and i don't feel the need to go in with something else to blend it make it look seamless i'm also going to take the leftover powder run it down the sides of my nose and underneath my lip. With no extra product, doing this is a great way to get a very subtle and natural contour to the face. I'm also going to take just a little bit of bronzer and bronze up my face. I can't help it. I really wanted to just use cream products, but I truly think I couldn't do my makeup without adding a little bit of powder bronzer at the end. It's like that one step that no matter what, I just feel like I need it in order to complete my makeup look. Before I go in with this product on my eyes, let's swatch it. So it comes in this beautiful frosted packaging just like the Glow Lust did. And I went ahead and swatched it so I have taken off the protective covers, but it did have a protective cover on the lid and it also had a... Oh, something to note is that when you shut it, it doesn't like have the same kind of that a lot of products do so. Even if it feels like it's not fully shut, it is. Um, what I was saying is this also had a protective cover that I took off. So let's start by swatching this one. Ooh, 
This is super moussey. I thought it was gonna be more like um, a ColourPop Super Shock shadow, but it's very like moussey. There's that and that's not a lot of product. That is the thinnest amount. So let me go in with just a little bit more and show you, there we go, yeah. So that's it with a little bit more. You can see just the little amount right there versus a lot right next to it. And next I'm going to go in with the topper, which is absolutely stunning on this product. I'm gonna swatch that next to these. And wow, that is so pretty. And now I'm gonna put this on top of that brown shade. See how that creates kind of a new shade. That's with the, oof, that is so pretty the way that it catches the light. And something else that I wanted to do was compare this to the shade just a kiss in the Desi X Katie Frankation palette from Dussel Colors. These colors just look very similar and I have a feeling that they are going to perform in a very similar manner. So it's this shade right here and this is the Auric shade. So let me swatch these using a completely clean finger on my other hand. So here is Just a Kiss, the more golden shade compared to Defiance this lighter shade and I am not a professional swatcher so please don't judge my swatches too much. I definitely dug into the Just A Kiss just a little bit more and I will say the Just A Kiss is more flaky and has more kind of a kick up so it was easier with just the swipe of my finger to pick up more product. So I think that that speaks more in favor of the Defiance shadow because I love this Just A Kiss but it does Kind of flake all over your face very easily and sometimes i just want shimmer on my lid i don't want shimmer everywhere and so i'm hoping that the defiance shade will be a lot more sticky to where i put it from just the swatch it seems like it's going to be what i'm hoping to do with this product is apply the moussey part all over my lid my finger and then blend it out with a little brush and then top it just in the center with the shimmery top coat to kind of create like really easy halo eye is kind of what I'm hoping for, but we'll see how it turns out. So I'm getting a little bit of that mousse on my finger. Wow, I really like that color, like not talking about the formula or the blendability. This color looks so pretty, like I love this already. Um, and also this is it with just my finger. Like it just blends out really well. Like I'm still gonna blend it with a brush, but if you were in a pickle and just had to throw it on with your finger and walk out the door, I think tapping it in even more, you could get this to look like you had blended it out with a brush with how creamy and blendable that it is. Now I'm gonna go in with my brush that has absolutely no product on it. Blend that out. And as you can see, this product is I don't want to say shimmery, but it definitely has like more, it's not matte, but blended out into the crease, it doesn't look like a shimmery, shiny color into my crease, which can sometimes look odd. So it's a very, very versatile shade. To note is that it is a little bit cooler than I expected. Like, I think it is a true neutral, but I was expecting it to just be a little bit more warm. And that is my bias because I love warmer tone products. I just think they blend out easier and they look better on my skin and on my eyes. So I do wish that it was a little bit more warm, but I think it is a true neutral. So, and a part of me really wants to go in and apply a rusty brown orange all in through my crease in the outer corner and smoke it out and make it into a orange brown smoky eye. And I might do that video separate, maybe do three looks, one product using the Defiance shadow, um, cause I think that that would look really pretty. But for the sake of this review and just using the product on its own, I'm gonna leave it as is. So now I'm going to go in with the top coat, focusing that in the center and then gently blending it out. Cause I kind of want this to look like a halo eye, but we'll see how applying it goes.
and no fallout from either product so far. I'm debating whether or not I want to bring this all the way in. Okay, I am gonna kind of tap it more into the inner corner. Just very gently. I like this, but I really do wish that it was more warm tone the more that I look at it. Like it's a beautiful product and it looks great on the eyes, but I do wish that the mousse was just a little bit more warm toned. So yeah, but the product itself, the way that it works is beautiful. Like no complaints about the way that this applies or blends into the skin. And I'm actually gonna take a little bit of this top coat on a pointed brush and blend that into my inner corner. And we'll see if it picks up using the brush because I haven't used a brush with this yet. I've just been using my fingers and put that in my inner corner. It's definitely not as pigmented, but I think that works out well. So if you want it to be really pigmented, like on my lid, you can use your finger. If you want it to be more diffused, like an inner corner highlight, you can pick it up on a brush. To finish off the eyes, I'm going to run a bit of bronzer underneath my bottom lash line and then take a little bit of a black and just smudge it out in the outer corners to just really smoke out the eyes and add a little bit of dimension add a little bit of dimension before I put on mascara. going to set my face with the Trader Joe's rose water because I just cannot do my makeup without setting it and then add mascara and be right back. As I was doing my mascara, I kept coming back to the conclusion that this is cool toned or like every time I looked at it, I was like, oh my God, this is so cool toned. And I think a part of that is because I do love warm eyeshadows. Like every time I do my makeup, I feel like I have to throw something warm into my crease. And this is so not that. <laughs> So I almost feel a little biased in saying that it's cool toned because it is neutral, but in my opinion and the way that I do my makeup, this does lean cool toned. So if you're like me and you like warm tones and you have a similar skin tone to me, I think be aware that this product is a little bit more cool toned than I expected. And also now that I'm looking at my skin, it looks really dewy and healthy, but I don't think that I'll mix it in with my foundation again next time and instead just focus it on the high points of my face because I think that they would stand out even more and it might look even prettier having that glow concentrated versus all over my face, which is still a beautiful look and something that might look a little better for summer when you want that all over glow all over your face. I'm gonna quickly do my lips and then give you my final thoughts. So this is the final look. I'm definitely a little less excited about the eyes now that I'm finished. And like I've said, I think that's just because this isn't something that I would normally do. I feel like this looks really professional though. Like I could see myself wearing this into the office and it being just a normal day, you know, nothing out of the ordinary, something very basic somebody's not gonna bat their eyes at. But for me personally, it is a little too cool toned on the eyes for me to want to just use it on its own like I just did in the future um for the face product i love it i will continue to use it i am going to try and focus it like i said it feels like a luxurious skincare product and i know sam mentioned that that you can mix it in with your skincare so i think if you wanted to you could just throw this in with your moisturizer and then wear mascara and just look like a glowing goddess all day long and people wouldn't look at you like you have a highlighter slathered all over your face because it is so creamy and blendable and looks like nothing on the skin at least with this shade on my skin tone i will do a check-in after wearing this for a couple of hours to see how it holds up i have a feeling that i'm just gonna look a little bit more dewy like most people would after a couple of hours of wearing this on the face but i also want to see if the eyes transfer at all if there's any more fallout throughout the day just to see how it holds up because so many people focus on face products longevity but 
You also have to notice if the eyes hold up because some eyeshadows will transfer, they'll get all over the place or they'll fade throughout the day and not look quite as vibrant as when you first put them on. So this is my update at the end of the day. I've only been wearing the makeup for about five and a half hours, so not that long. Um, I'm trying to catch the daylight, so I'm sorry that this isn't the best. But you can see the skin, it got a little bit more dewy, but in a way that I really like. So I think if you're worried about the wear and tear of this foundation, I did like sit at my desk and work all day. So it wasn't really put to the test in the sense of going outside and existing out in the world, but just sitting here, it held up perfectly well. I have no complaints. Um, but the eyes, I feel like did fade just a little bit. Like it didn't quite have the same pow as when I put it on. And I do have my ring light here so I can turn this on. You can get a better sense of what I'm talking about. The skin looks really nice. I'm really happy with it. But yeah, the eyes I feel like did fade a little. And sorry, I have a hard time keeping my eyes closed. It <laughs> eyes closed if I have one other one open. Of course, I can close my eyes. But it, you can see it's creasing a little bit in the eyes and a part of that could be that I didn't use, you know, like a fancy eye primer. I just did it with foundation and set with powder. But yeah, overall the eyes don't have the staying power that I was kind of hoping for. At least it didn't transfer to the bottom of my eyes, which I'm happy about. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you, especially if you made it this far. I'm hoping for one of my future videos that I can do possibly three looks with this um, eye duo, with the Defiance eye duo, because I think that I could create several different things using that kind of as the base, but then mixing it in with other things to create three really different looks. And I also think that I could come up with some dupes for the Auric Shadow and Defiance. I don't think that there's gonna be a dupe for the Glow Lust. It's so unique, so creamy, and really stands above the crowd. And the only thing that I can think that is somewhat similar to it is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood flawless photo. You know what I'm talking about. So stay tuned for those videos. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.